Greetings, family, and welcome to another episode of Wake Up Africa. My name is Dr. Mumbi Seraki. How you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray, family, that you are well. Yeah, in all your ways and that you're focused on what matters. And as I always say, what matters is your healing, your mental restoration, your psychological and emotional restoration, and really using your mind, your imagination and your time to create a whole new reality for you. But those are stories for other days. Here's Errol, a uh, special shout out to him family. Just, you know, not wanting to make eye contact with him so he doesn't come jump on me. Uh, but I know a lot of you guys email me even about Errol. He's good. He's just in 7D family. So, of course, now, by now, I'm sure you've watched one of the two or one or two of the episodes that I've done on Charles's visit to Kenya uh, being seen as a very significant turning point for I want to say the global Illuminati empire. That might be overreaching, but really um, for the monarchy. But we know the so-called monarchy are the ones who are running the global shadow government. And it's been very interesting because they picked Kenya because they saw us as a soft target or a soft marketing place where they could come um, you know, the children will be there, the dancers will be there, the Kenyans who still love the monarchy will be there, and they'll make the not my king, Charles, look good. But it's very interesting that it's not going as planned, because they always think Kenyans are soft, we're docile, so it's always the easiest place to go. And also, Kenya is um, their East African, and I want to say the wider African kind of headquarters for their Masonic orders and all this stuff. But the interesting thing is there has been a growing call among Kenyans um, for him to apologize to Kenya for colonialism and all the terrible things that came with it. And guys aren't, you know, actually guys are even taking it further. People are even saying, forget even just an apology. We want reparations. But for the people who know, because a lot of the people who have been recommended, recommend, you know, kind of pushing that, 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 um, the, the viral handle of he must apologize when he comes are the people who over in and understand that with an apology comes some money. And that is actually at the center of why Babylon and all the colonial powers and all the slave so-called powers have never apologized because they know once that apology comes out of their mouth, then we have to now discuss, okay, your people are still colonizing us today. So what's going to happen there? When are you guys going to give back the two, three, four hundred thousand acres that you still control? So they know that an apology must come with something in this day and age. So we'll see. I don't know. It will be very surprising. Um, and, you know, he's coming for three days during the lunar eclipse, which is very significant. I've done a whole separate show on that. So make sure you catch that family so that you can use your spiritual, you know, um, powers or your spiritual authority to make sure that all these narratives turn out in our favor. Um, so there's a lot of people who have been speaking out in Kenya uh, and they say, you know, if he is not coming to apologize for the atrocities they did to us, then he should not come. Um, and that's just a 53-year-old ac uh, accountant who said that. Another guy um, uh, said, you know, wait, I'm looking, torture and other forms of ill treatment must be acknowledged. We are hoping that he will bring a national apology. Um, and this is actually one of the daughters of Dead and Kimbadi saying she hoped the visit would lead to closure. Um, he said, once we have the goodwill from the divided kingdom government, everything else will be okay. And she actually heads a foundation that looks after the interests of veterans of the independence war as well, campaigning for environmental issues, etc., etc. Um, so Kenyans are now saying, and it's funny because, you know, there's um, 
all these politicians have their publicists. Let's put it like that. Let me just be polite. And there was actually one of the, because so the president, well, I don't know if he was doing it or his, his handlers were doing it, but they were kind of promoting how it's such a big deal that, you know, this man who went from being a chicken farmer to the president of Kenya has even managed to bring the king of the divided kingdom to Kenya. That's kind of the narrative um, that one of his popular online people was trying to bring. And he got shut down. Um, people saying, you know, why are we celebrating the arrival of a colonizer? Why do we even care? Um, you know, others saying if they call a national holiday, that will be a big issue, you know, that will be a major issue. And it's just good to see the Kenyans, you know, when you look at the commentary, especially if you're interested, just go, Charles, visit Kenya, and you'll see what people are saying. Um, so this guy, he had said, you know, King Charles coming, even Uhuru Kenyatta could not bring him, that's the previous president, blah, 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 blah. And others were like, you know, are you praising your colonizers for visiting the house? Nigga, you must be one illiterate fool. And many, many other, I mean, he got so roasted. Um, and it's very interesting to see even others saying, you know, there's someone who said, you know, the English and Americans do not care about us, but their interests, uh, you know, and others saying they know the content creator at State House will give a nod to all their ridiculous de get demands um, and all for a photo shoot, blah, blah, blah. So it's like Kenyans are saying they're sick and tired of sick and tired. And the visit is actually not looking like it's going to go as well for, you know, for Charles, if he thinks this is going to make him look good, because I guarantee you, family, as it gets closer to him arriving in Kenya, you're going to see more and more bloggers, because it's, it's what is going to get views, talking about how he has to apologize, he has to do this. You'll even see some politicians bandwagging on that, you're bandwagoning. And for me, what all of this demonstrates is that this narrative is closing out. Charles is trying to come to Kenya, and I've covered this. He, they're calling it a pivotal point in his monarchy, which will des, they literally determine whether, you know, he, his, the monarchy survives during his time as king. Not my king. But that's what they're saying, and I've done other shows on what the, the spiritual significance of this and everything. But it shows you that even when you're seeing this conversation, because this trended when, you know, when it was released that he's coming, this trended. With Kenyans just saying, why is it? We don't even care that he's coming. That's we're dealing with fuel issues. We're dealing with the fact that they say El Nino is coming, but we're not seeing rain. We're dealing with so many issues. Charles coming is really not on the, on the, in the heavens of the majority of Kenyans, although they'll try and shove it down those who watch mainstream media and still buy newspapers, which is a very elite select few. Anyway, let me know what you think, whether you're from Kenya or wherever you're from, about what do you think the nature of this visit is about? And as Kenyans, how do you feel about it? Let me know in the comments and maybe I'll give you a shout out in our next episode. Tuko Pamoja.